Gothenburg is Sweden's second biggest city, and it's known to be a fun and vibrant place. It's also known for being expensive. Not as expensive as Stockholm, but it's not far off. Don't worry, I've got you covered. This is a list of the top 10 things to do in Gothenburg that are completely free. Let's start with nature. There's a lot of gorgeous places to explore in Gothenburg that are free. Slottskogen is the biggest, oldest and most popular park in Gothenburg. You can wander through the lush greenery, or you can visit the zoo in the park, or you can just enjoy a picnic in the sun. And you can also see the play Shoreline Stone here. It's a monument to the Swedish band Bruder Daniel, their song Shoreline and a Swedish meme. Right next to Slottskogen, you can also visit the botanical gardens. These gardens turn 100 years old this year, and they're also very popular. 16,000 species of plants can be found here, and it's visited by 600,000 people every year. Technically, there is a fee of 30 Swedish crowns to visit these gardens, but the fee is completely optional and voluntary. So if you're a cheap bastard, you can enjoy all of this natural splendor without spending a single krona. Everyone loves boats, but many of the boat tours in Gothenburg cost an arm and a leg. But there's actually a way to get a free boat tour in the city. Granted, it's not a very long boat ride and not all that exciting, but it's a very convenient way to get to the island of Hisingen. Elvsnabbare is a boat that will take you from Stenpiden to Lindholmspiden, and it's completely free. The only problem is that this boat only departs on weekdays, so if you're visiting Gothenburg on a Saturday or a Sunday, well, then there's no free boat ride for you. Then you'll have to pay for the public transport boat instead, which isn't really all that expensive either, to be honest. Gothenburg is a city that's famous for its street art, and you can find many self-guided walking tour suggestions online. You can find street art in many places, for example in the city center, next to the cathedral or close to Feskekyrka. And you can also find a lot of street art in the Majuna district, around Stigberget. Or you can simply walk around and see if you can spot any nice pieces of art along the way. Chances are you'll find something amazing, or at least interesting, wherever you go in the city. The next thing you can do for free in Gothenburg is quite simply to do some old-fashioned sightseeing. Take a walk along the famous Parade Street Avenue and enjoy the view of restaurants and stores lining the street. And when you reach the end of Avenue, you'll encounter Götaplatsen with both art museums and art galleries. And in the middle of Götaplatsen, you'll find a famous Poseidon statue that's been here since 1931. And let's not forget Feskekyrka, which has a very strange name because it tries to mimic the local dialect. Feskekyrka is a fish market from 1874, but the people of Gothenburg thought it looked like a church, so they started calling it the fish church instead. The Swedish word for fish church is Feskekyrka, but that name was transformed into the quirky sounding Feskekyrka after a few decades. Now the building and its name stands as a testament to the weird humor you can find in Gothenburg. Speaking of churches, there are some pretty interesting proper churches to see as well. First of all, you should have a look at the Gothenburg Cathedral. This is actually the third church that stood here, because the other two burnt down, but they rebuilt it every time. It sounds a little bit like a Monty Python sketch, doesn't it? The first church was built in 1633, but it burnt down in 1721, and then the second one burnt down in 1802. 
They apparently took their time to build the third church, maybe to ensure that it wouldn't burn down as easily, because this church didn't open until 1815. The Haga church is also quite spectacular. Make sure you don't miss this one. Especially if you're on your way to Haga to eat a gigantic cinnamon bun anyway. Another church you might want to visit is Mastugskyrkan, located on top of Stigberget. It was built in 1914 in a national romanticism style and is one of the most typical landmarks of Gothenburg. If you want to get a marvelous view of the city, you can book a guided tour up the tower. But that costs a hundred Swedish crowns, so it's not part of this list. You'll have to be satisfied with marveling at the view from ground level instead. Do you like getting free stuff? I bet you do. Then you should visit Gratis Butiken, the free store in Majuna. You can give away things you don't need any longer, and you can also take stuff you want. There are some caveats though. You can only take at most 5 items, and the store is only open on Wednesdays between 6pm and 8pm. And today is not a Wednesday, so I can't show you the store in action. In fact, I'm not really sure why I came out here, just to show you an empty storefront. Either way, if you want to get some free stuff, you'd better be here on a Wednesday. Ullevi is an arena in Gothenburg that opened in 1958. Many important football games have taken place here, and many important concerts. In 1984, 64,000 people watched Bruce Springsteen at this arena. And more importantly, 64,000 people started to jump when he played Twist and Shout, and that broke Ullevi. The concrete cracked, and concerts could no longer be played here. The arena was reconstructed, and huge pillars were put in place to ensure that it wouldn't crack again. In 2012, Bruce Springsteen returned to Ullevi, and he set a new record when 66,000 people attended that concert. This time, the concrete didn't crack, despite Bruce's best efforts to get the audience to jump. So what's Ullevi doing in a list of free things to do in Gothenburg? Bruce Springsteen is returning to Ullevi this summer, and those tickets are definitely not free. But what you can do is bring a few beers and a sun lounger and sit outside of Ullevi and listen to the music. That might be a little bit unethical, but it's completely free. We all enjoy a bit of culture, don't we? And what's the best way to be cultural? Visiting a museum, of course. And luckily for us, there are several museums in Gothenburg that you can visit for free. The Gothenburg Art Gallery lies at the end of the Avenue Parade Street, and it's completely free to visit. Except today, because they're actually installing a new exhibition right now. They're opening again tomorrow. But even more impressively, at least in my opinion, the Museum of Natural History in Slottskogen is also completely free. Here you can marvel at very exciting exhibits and also learn new weird and wonderful facts about nature. Nice beavers. And nice hooters as well. And nice tits. Actually, I'm gonna stop now. I have no idea if any of these birds are tits. You often see images of T-Rexes and Stegosauruses fighting, but fun fact, did you know that we are actually closer in time to a T-Rex than a T-Rex is to a Stegosaurus? And make sure you don't miss the whale room with a fully reconstructed blue whale, the Malm whale. There are many other museums in the world where you can see blue whale skeletons, but none other where you can see a fully mounted blue whale like this. This is quite spectacular. The poor whale got stranded outside of Gothenburg, and this is its final resting place, among screaming kids and fascinated adults. Summer is a great time to visit Gothenburg, and if you're lucky, you can even get some sun. If you feel like cooling off, you can visit a public swimming pool called Pearl Harbor. Yes, Gothenburg people have a very weird sense of humor, and they do love their quirky names. Another example of a quirky name is the public sauna you can find next to Pearl Harbor. 
it's basically a public sauna that you can enjoy for free. Or at least you could. It's being renovated right now, but it's gonna reopen at the end of 2023. As for the quirky name, since there's a famous fish market in Gothenburg called Feskekyrkan, they decided to call this sauna Svetekyrkan, the sweat church. I'm just gonna roll my eyes at these Gothenburg names. I've covered a lot of free things to do in Gothenburg, but there's one special thing remaining, and it's actually not just a single thing. Throughout the year there are lots of different festivals and parties, and many of them are free. Göteborg's Kulturkalas is at the beginning of September, and Kulturnatta happens in October. The Science Festival is in April, and the Chalmers Cortege is also in the same month. Flunsåsa Parken has events between May and July, and there's a mega flea market in Majuna in May. And right now there's another big celebration happening in the city, because Gothenburg turns 400 years old in 2023. Or actually it turns 402, but they're pretending that it turns 400. You can learn more about that whole mess in my other video about Gothenburg. But either way, it's a big celebration with lots of activities throughout the city. And that was my final tip about what you can do for free in Gothenburg. I hope you found it useful. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Now I'm gonna enjoy Gothenburg a bit more, but you should check out this video for more tips about things to do in Sweden.